So today we are going to be talking about how to assemble the Jabsco 50410-1251 raw water pump um, from its uh, components. Um, here it is all put together and uh, when the video starts it's going to be all taken apart and I'm going to run through the steps um, of how to put it together and since I made a mistake um, I'm also going to show you how to get the shaft off uh, to get the shaft off. So, um, enjoy! Hello YouTube, this is user Methudius um, putting together a video on the Jabsco 40410 raw water pump uh, that's found on many marine uh, V8 engines. Uh, let's quickly go through the parts. This is the impeller housing. This is the front cover. This is the shaft and shaft assembly. Here's the retaining ring that keeps the bearings in, two bearings, a lip seal to keep the seawater out of your boat. This O-ring was on mine when I took it apart. Um, I'm going to put it back. It went uh, kind of between the impeller assembly and the, the uh, bearings. Screws that hold the face on, an O-ring to keep to seal between the impeller assembly and the face, and the impeller, of course. Um, so if you're looking at this and you don't... Uh, don't know what a Jabsco 40410 pump is, probably not the video for you, but if you've got one of these things and it doesn't work or your impeller is shot and you're wondering how to put it back together, uh, let's do that now. So I've got mine all apart. Um, taking it apart is basically the opposite of putting it back together, so if you've got yours together you can probably pretty much figure out how it goes um, watching this. So the first thing, I cleaned out, um, this is where the bearings go, I cleaned out this area a little bit ago, and uh, so now it's time to put the bearings back in. Now, they could probably benefit from just a very small amount of grease, um, and I could probably benefit from some rubber gloves, but this is the world we live in. All right. Now, they're not going to drop in, hopefully, so we have to figure out a way to get them in. Um, what I am going to try here is to just press them in with a C-clamp. I think that'll work great. Okay, I'm back. So, what can happen is the, the, the ball bearing here can try to go in sideways, and you're not gonna want that. So you're gonna, I just went and I just tapped it gently to get it to line up nicely. So, now that it's good and seated in there, we should be able to press it in uh, with a C-clamp so, what I've got set up here is I've got a, a fairly large C-clamp, I've got a piece of wood to protect the housing, and then I've got a big steel washer on this end, and then my C-clamp. So, we can just push it right in. And in it goes. And there it is. There's two of these, so we're going to do this twice. Don't forget the washer. Take that out. Okay, now let's get this one just started gently. Okay, once it's once it's started and lined up in there, then it won't try to twist on you, and that's a good. Once we've assembled it, it looks just like the first one, just like the first one, and we'll just press it right on in. doesn't go very far. Okay. So now we have our two ball bearings. Now even though we did have to press those in, there's a chance they might come out. And so for that, we have a retaining ring. Um, I am reusing the retaining ring that was in mine. I probably should be replacing it, but I don't uh, happen to have another one. And so... Uh, we're just going to put the original back in. Um, so you're also going to need retaining ring pliers. Handy thing to have. Um, you just put that little guy in his little slot and in he goes. So now you have the bearings are fixed up and locked in place. Um, and these, these things go bad. Incidentally, the bearings, this is the box they came in. 
They are SKF Explorer and the number is 6203-2RSJ. Um, so if you're curious uh, what kind of bearings and you don't want to just order the kit on, the, on eBay that's for this, uh, you can just order the bearings. Um, so next, we're going to flip this over and start reassembling the, the pump itself. So now that we've got the bearings and the retaining ring in, you're probably a little grease on that retaining ring to keep it from rusting in the marine environment probably would not go amiss. Um, when I pulled mine out, it was very rusty. Um, so, can't hurt. Okay. Uh, so now we have to put the impeller assembly back on the shaft. And so, it kind of goes on like, like so. Uh, I'm going to try to just tap it on because it's a little bit longer than my C-clamp will, will, uh, will do. So, maybe just a gentle... So once again, I've got the block to protect the end of the impeller housing, and I wanted to get the clamp on here uh, because I wanted to just gently drive it the rest of the way. I didn't want to pound on it, um, and so it'll I'm sure somewhere there is a technical manual that says, well, this gap should be an eighth of an inch or something. Um, and if anyone can find that technical manual, please send it to me, and I will link it with the video. There we go. So, now we got our pump, bearings are in place. This all looks very reasonable. So. When I took my pump, my Jabsco raw water pump, apart, it had this teeny little O-ring uh, around the shaft. I don't know what it's for. Um, I couldn't find it in any of the instructions, and so I'm just going to put it back. Maybe it keeps water from running back to the bearings or something. I'm not sure. So the next thing that goes in is the lip seal. Um, what this does is it keeps water from passing between the shaft and the housing and out into your engine compartment. Um, and so I'm going to put just a touch of grease on this as well. It seems like it can't hurt. Drop that bad boy down. Uh, seat this, you're going to need some sort of blunt instrument that uh, will allow you to press it in place without damaging the seal itself. I've chosen a chopstick for this task. Good sturdy one. You don't want to push it down too far because it will, I believe, go all the way out the bottom if you're not careful. Maybe it won't. Oh, yeah, I think it will. Um, hmm. Yes, it will. Uh, so, I am going to show you how to take this apart. So, I stuffed the lip seal too far down into the uh, housing, and so now I'm going to show how to remove the shaft from a Jabsco raw water pump. Um, so, what I've got on here is a wheel puller. What's the water pump? This is a water pump. Oh. Yes. And I've got a wheel puller on here, and uh, so getting the shaft off is a simple matter of just cranking it off. Whoops. Uh oh, now I made a mess. Are you trying to do that? I'm trying to remove the shaft that I put on a few minutes ago. <laughs> Dad, what are you doing? 
I'm removing shaft from this water pump. Really? I'm going to have to redo all the audio for this part, you know. Oh, and there it's free. Okay. All right. So, let me... I did it. So, let me tighten. Okay. So, I've got the pump back apart. Um, and what you're going to want to do is install the lip seal uh, down here. Um, just install it with your fingers. Um, let's see if that shows up. Um, just install it with your fingers. Make sure you don't push it too far because if you push it too far you uh, are going to have to take it apart and um, get it back together. So probably the easiest way to do it at this point is just push it in with your fingers. Make sure it's not too far in. Um, okay, so now we're back to putting the shaft back on the bearings. So my uh, clamp isn't large enough to do this in one go so what I'd want to do is I'm just going to tap it on just gently tap it on oh, make sure you're protecting your work surface down here and then just gently tap it on gently now once it's on far enough to get yeah I know once it's on far enough to get a clamp on, you're gonna want to you're gonna want to press the shaft in the rest of the way with a C clamp or something, just because it's gonna do um, it's gonna do a better job. It's gonna you don't want to be pounding on this thing when it stops. You want to bring it to a stop gently. So okay. Um, so now we're just uh, looking to close up um, that gap. Like I said, there's probably some manual that says exactly what that gap should be, but uh, I don't know exactly what that is, and so I'm just trying to close it up to the way it looked like when I took it apart, which is, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch. Okay. Maybe. Okay, so now. Now we've got... I've got on the truck. Really? I think on hiding. Oh my gosh. Um, so, now we have the two pieces together. They spin nicely. Got new bearings. Have a new lip seal. Um, so we're almost done. So, um, what we need to do now is... We've got your impeller. Um, you're going to want to grease the spline of the impeller, or grease the shaft, I suppose. Um, Again, here's some of that, that marine grease. Um, you just don't want any, um, you don't want this thing to corrode on and become difficult to remove um, in the future. That's kind of. What is that, Dada? That is grease. Oh. So what that's. What is that, Dada? What? That's soap. We're going to use that next. Um, so once you've got some, once you've got the shaft. Don't put it on me. I'm not going to put it on you. Uh, once you got the shaft good and greased, um, probably should be wearing gloves here, um, you're going to want to put the impeller in. Now, uh, probably the best thing to do is use some good dish soap. Um, you, don't, you don't need to grease the, uh, you don't want the, the impeller itself covered in grease. Um, so just slather the inside with some liquid dish soap, just something that will give it a little slide, but uh, something that will isn't going to stick around um, inside the pump. Um, all right, now you want to get that lined up, and then once it's lined up, down it goes. Okay. And so now there's their impeller. It went down. It went down. Um, and so you can kind of see how it works. Um, the, the engine spins, at least the way mine is mounted, um, the engine spins this way. Um, you can kind of see how that works. The engine spins this way. Um, 
So, there's your impeller. That's down in place. Now, it's a hmm? yeah. Uh -huh. um, now we've got our O-ring, and let's let's give that a little bit of a little bit of dish soap also, just to make it nice and slippery. Fits in there nice. All right. Now we've got our cover. Just line the cover up. Um, comes with these four little screws. Hex head stainless steel screws with locking lock washers underneath. Um, can I help? Can you help? Well, hold on. Oh. Yeah. We're trying to do the screws. Well, I'm tightening the front lid. Um, and this is, it looks like this is a, on mine at least, they are 5 16 inch bolts. Um, what is this, Dada? Yours might be different. What? what? Is this? That is a washer. Were you doing so it's a washer? I was using it to press bearings in. Oh. Yes. It's on my finger. It is on your finger. Um, so, yeah, so tighten up. Here you go. Tighten up the. Uh, I put it right there. Thank you. Tighten it up, and your water pump, your raw water pump, is good to go. Um, so this is Methudius. Water pump. <laughs> this is Methudius, and hopefully it's funny. this. The water pump funny. Is it funny? Yeah. Hopefully, um, this little explanation of how to assemble a Jabsco five zero four one zero dash one two five one raw water pump was beneficial to you. Um, I created this because I did not find any videos on YouTube showing this exact thing. Um, and so hopefully uh, someone can find some use to it. And if I've made some egregious error, um, you know, if these, if these screws, if these bolts are supposed to be tightened to like 50 foot pounds or something and, and you want to tell me about it, um, leave a comment. All right. Thank you very much.